Welcome to the section Implementing Mandatory Access Control with SE Linux and App Armor. In this section, we'll cover these topics What SE Linux is and how it can benefit a systems administrator, How to set security contexts for files and directories, How to use SE Troubleshoot to troubleshoot SE Linux problems, Looking at SE Linux policies and how to create custom policies. What App Armor is and how it can benefit a systems administrator. Looking at App Armor policies. Working with App Armor command line utilities. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with how SE Linux can benefit a systems administrator. In this video, we're going to see why an SE Linux is important and how to use it to the best of our knowledge. SE Linux is a free open source software project that was developed by the US National Security Agency. While it can be theoretically installed on any Linux distro, the Red Hat type distros are the only ones that come with it already set up and enabled. It uses code in Linux kernel modules, along with file system extended attributes, to help ensure that only authorized users and processors can access either sensitive files or system resources. There are three ways in which SE Linux can be used. It can help prevent intruders from exploiting a system. It can be used to ensure that only users with the proper security clearance can access files that are labeled with a security classification. In addition to Mac, SE Linux can also be used as a type of role-based access control. In this section, I'll only be covering the first of these three uses because that is the most common way in which SE Linux is used. There's also the fact that covering all three of these uses would require a complete course, which I don't have space to do here. So, how can SE Linux benefit the busy systems administrator? Well, you might remember when a few years ago news about the Shellshock bug hit the world's headlines. Essentially, Shellshock was a bug in the Bash shell that allowed intruders to break into a system and exploit it by gaining root privileges. For systems that were running SE Linux, it was still possible for the bad guys to break in, but SE Linux would have prevented them from successfully running their exploits. SE Linux is also yet another mechanism that can help protect data in users' home directories. If you have a machine that's set up as a network file system server, a Samba server, or a web server, SE Linux will prevent those daemons from accessing users' home directories, unless you explicitly configure SE Linux to allow that behavior. On web servers, you can use SE Linux to prevent the execution of malicious CGI scripts or PHP scripts. If you don't need for your server to run CGI or PHP scripts, you can disable them in SE Linux. With older versions of Docker and without mandatory access control, it was trivially easy for a normal user to break out of a Docker container and gain root level access to the host machine. Although Docker security has since improved, SE Linux is still a useful tool for hardening servers that run Docker containers. So now, you're likely thinking that everyone would use such a great tool, right? Sadly, that's not the case. In its beginning, SE Linux got a reputation for being difficult to work with, and many administrators would just disable it. In fact, a lot of tutorials you see on the web or on YouTube have disable SE Linux as the first step. In this section, I'd like to show you that things have improved and that SE Linux no longer deserves its bad reputation. That's all for this video. 